Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. Welcome to Midnight Mandela. So how are you guys doing? Let's see who is in. I was sort of organized. I did have a two-hour notice before the show this time. Okay, Roger Prescott, first one in. Futuristic, hearts, truth. I think I'm a little spaced out today. Futuristic again. Songs that are catchy, truth of you and me. Janice Windsor, Shari D is in, welcome. Got some of yours in for today. Flor Condia, Katie B, Kai Luca Zachary, yeah, I'm totally spaced out. Sometimes I can totally remember everybody I said and I'm totally on it, it's not today. Voidscape, Lord Frybread, Preliminal, Ann Gaynor, Gaia Bear, uh, jumping ship, I don't think I said you yet. Okay, I think that's everybody. Okay, so as usual, do uh, I have a little bit of world news and then we'll go on to the Mandela's. I have a lot of Mandela's um, picked up a little bit this week and I wasn't really looking for them, but some of them are a little older ones, I think. And some of them are from you guys. Okay, so what's up? Um, this one was just kind of interesting because you know, with the the death rates and stuff with the sea, and you kind of, we kind of think of like Sweden as um, not having gone to sea crazy because they didn't lock down that much and they haven't had a high death rate anyway. And everybody said, oh, the Sweden's gonna have all this problem because they didn't lock down. Well, they didn't lock down. So we kind of think of them as, you know, dodging the bullet. But it was interesting because somebody from Sweden was on Reddit talking about some issues that Sweden had. So I guess Sweden, um, and a lot of places have done this. Yeah, I know the United States did. A lot of places, they, um, they didn't really say you couldn't go into the hospital, but people were so scared that a lot of people didn't, and they died because they had heart problems and all these other things, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't go into the emergency room. Plus, they blocked a lot of treatment options unless you were near death, so then you would get a lot sicker because you weren't allowed to get your cancer treatments and screenings and like that. So there was a lot of deaths from that. Well, apparently, uh, also in the United States, they were pushing older people to sign DNRs, which means do not resuscitate. So that means if you, um, you, get, uh, you go under and reach a certain point, they won't try to save you. And there's been some talk that even if you didn't sign a DNR, they still wouldn't try to. And um, then the whole thing with not giving uh, regular oxygen going straight to the vents. Okay, so apparently in the Sweden, what they did was they, they uh, just said, we're not giving any oxygen. You don't get to go to the vents. You don't get nothing if you were over about 65. And, you know, if you're over 65, you know, some people are like 65, 70. They could live another 30 years if they're healthy. But maybe you catch some kind of a pneumonia or whatever and you need some oxygen well apparently in sweden they're just saying like no oxygen for anybody and don't send them to the hospital so a lot of people did die because they needed help just a little bit of oxygen and the people in the care homes aren't, weren't allowed to give oxygen it's pretty simple to do supplemental oxygen you don't really need to have like a phd to do that i mean it's not like you're actually cutting open and putting a vent in um, they're not allowed to do it and the, and the doctors weren't supposed to, weren't allowed to come and help. And then they were told not to send anybody to the hospital. So a lot of people died because they basically just said, anybody over 65, don't send them here. Um, so now there's a lot of complaints from, um, so that, you know, the storyline is, oh, we're going to have this big wave of C patients. And so we have to keep the hospitals cleared out. And the whole concept is weird. I mean, shouldn't you just treat the people who are sick now? And then if it gets busy, then you start to um, prioritize your patients. You don't just throw everybody out of the hospital before it even gets busy. But that seems like what every place has done, which I just find that very suspicious because I don't think that's ever been done before. Um, you know, don't you just wait and see how bad it gets before you start denying care? Uh, especially as this thing drug on and the wave of sick people never showed up and then you had other countries where they never showed up I mean wouldn't at some point you just go oh, okay 
you know, it should have been a lot earlier is my point. This is very suspicious. So, uh, so we were told not to send them in. They told us that we shouldn't send anyone to the hospital, even if they may be 65 and have many years to live. We were told not to send them in. A nurse who worked in several care homes around Gavel, I can't really pronounce Swedish words properly, but north of Stockholm at the beginning of the pandemic. Some can have lots of years left to live with loved ones, uh, but they don't have the chance. And of course, they blocked people from visiting their, their, uh, the loved ones as well. So that they, they didn't have any advocates. Uh, they suffocate to death. It's a lot of, so they were allowed to give morphine, but they weren't allowed to give oxygen. Uh, you know, you, why wouldn't they just let them give ox? If they're going to be able to block them from going to the hospital, why can't they also make an emergency order allowing them to just give oxygen in the care home? I mean, you know, it's just like, it's so heartless. Let's see. So then there's, an, there's people from the emergency room saying, well, we didn't see any old people coming into the emergency room. Um, because normally you do have a lot of older people coming in because they have more problems as they age, you know. So they know something's up. Uh, Michael Faled, I'm not even going to try to say that word properly. A Swedish private consultant in anesthetics and intensive care said he believes a lot of lives could have been saved if more patients had been able to access hospital treatment or if care home workers were given increased responsibilities to administer oxygen themselves instead of waiting for specialists, C-19 response teams, or paramedics. If you need care and you benefit from care, for example, or oxygen, for a short time you should have it. Of course, like any other age group in the population. Um, yeah, I mean, that's horrible. Imagine if you're you know, your grandma, your mom is 66 and she just needs a little oxygen and they refuse to give it. I mean, it, that's just horrible. I, I don't know. You, you would think that like Sweden or some of these European places wouldn't be so heartless. It's just really hard to imagine. Anyway, um, just thought I would. So we're talking about death rates with the sea. I mean, you know. <laughs> Maybe there'd be fewer of them if you let people have supplemental oxygen when they needed it. It's like, it's disgusting. Okay, so uh, one other thing that I saw this week, looking at Reddit again, um, uh, universities. I've covered this a little bit before already, how they were locking kids in. Uh, this, this kid was talking about how uh, they had a fire alarm, and so she, you know, went... I don't know if you guys ever college or when you're in the dorms, but when there's a fire alarm, you're supposed to immediately leave the building and and wait outside. You're not supposed to bring anything. So there actually used to be a lot of like um, arguing because we knew that when we went downstairs, we would have to wait like a half hour because they would call the fire department and the fire department had to check every last room and it'd take a half hour and it was cold outside. So a lot of times we would just put on our shoes and get our jacket and bring a blanket and a hat. So, you know, it'd take an extra minute, but like, hey, look, there's no smoke. I don't think there's really a fire. I'm going to spend an extra 60 seconds getting this stuff, and then I'm going to go downstairs so I don't freeze my butt off. But we would always get a lot of flack for that because the kids come down with a blanket and a coat, and, and it's 3 o'clock in the morning. They pretty much knew that you 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 know didn't just happen to be holding all that stuff when the fire alarm went off you know so then they would always give us a bunch of crap for it you know you weren't supposed to bring anything down there i'm like yeah we're just supposed to sit out here and freeze all right so this person actually kind of did what we've always been taught which is go downstairs right away without stopping and did not bring a mask and then they got on the bullhorn and started yelling at her on the bullhorn and then they made her sit separately because you can't go back up to your room once it's a fire alarm until it's all checked out. So she couldn't go back up and get her mask. You'd think they'd have extra ones if they were so worried. I mean, it's not like, you know, they cost a fortune. Uh, you should have some cheap throwaway ones, right? So they made her sit back by herself. Okay, fine. And then when it goes 
comes time to go back into the building. Oh, you can't go back into the building because you don't have a mask. Well, where's she going to get one? So she, she just puts her shirt up over her face, and they're like, no, you have to have a real mask. And she's like, what's the difference between having your shirt over or a mask? And they, they're still giving her crap, so she just ran in. But, I mean, like, all this time yelling at her, um, you know, it's just kind of what it's come to now. It's, they're starting to get, like, you have to have the mask mask. You can't have a face shield. Uh, they're starting to cut back on your options to use the bandana. Um, so this is kind of how it goes. You know, at first you get all these options. Oh, well, don't complain because we gave you all these options. Then they just start picking away the options one by one. It's a frog boiling thing. All right, so this other person in another college, uh, apparently they are required to submit to COVID, the C testing every 16 days. And if they do not submit every 16 days, then um, they will be thrown out of college and the dorms. And this is off-campus, um, but uh, school-provided housing. So he's not actually on campus, but it is school-provided housing. Um, but a lot of what I'm seeing is a lot of campuses are requiring this kind of thing. If you are to go on the campus in any way for anything, then you must have something like this. Um, and if you test positive, and, and keep in mind that the tests are questionable reliability, test over and over and over and over, uh, how, what are the chances that even if you're not sick at all, you eventually test positive, or maybe you had another kind of coronavirus and it cross-reacts because the companies that make it admit that that can happen, um, and you test positive, or if you had it last year and you test positive, or, or months ago, or whatever, um, that you will be forcibly relocated to a special isolation area, um, which they don't give you any information about. So this person is complaining here, and you can actually see the letter that they submitted if it will come up here. So they uh, changed some names uh, to hide the identity. So like they changed the name of administrator to scumbag administrator. Um, hello, my name is Scumbag, and I am the associate director of graduate and family housing. Uh, and they're basically saying, yes, you're screwed, um, you know. And they're saying, you know, you signed a thing uh, agreeing to abide by university rules. A university reserves the sole right during the term of this agreement to reassign the resident to another bedroom or apartment. Resident agrees to occupy the specific bedroom or apartment to which he or she was assigned. Failure to move into an isolation unit could result in a three-day notice to perform, covenant, cure. I don't know what that means, but it probably just means do it in three days or, or, we're, or we're throwing you out. Uh, so, yeah, basically it's kind of turned into kind of a Nazi prison camp there now. You know, when you, I think we've all done this. We sign the things promising to abide by the rules with the certain notion that the rules are going to be reasonable and uh, now you can't really assume that. So, you know, I really strongly suggest that people who are thinking of going on on campus school, um, especially if you're a freshman or sophomore, just do online or do um, community college for now. Because once they get your money, you know, you're screwed. They don't have to give it back and they can treat you however they want. I think long term they're cutting their own throat though because, um, you know, you treat people like this. And I guess you'll get a certain percentage that become really brainwashed and obedient, but you're also going to get a lot of people who are just going like, I'm not paying all this money for a crap prison experiment uh, at school. And um, long term, I think they're cutting their own throats with this stuff. There's going to be a lot more, um, there's going to be a lot more homeschooling and internet and Even in the UK, they left all the people in the care homes to rot. A nurse exposed that, and she was fired. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's I was just talking to my uh, coworker today because I'm trying to get her to understand that what's on the news isn't everything. 
And she's like, well, all the health experts say blah, blah, blah on the news. I go, well, yeah, because you get fired if you um, don't go with that party line. And I started going, this doctor and this doctor and this senator was banned from Facebook and blah, blah, blah. And she had no idea that anybody, that any doctors have come forward to say anything else. You know, I don't think, she, I think she still doesn't believe me that um, she's starting to come around, though. She's starting to see with the testing um, which reminds me, there's a new metric in California. I, 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 I swear every two weeks, on like every couple of Tuesdays, there's a new metric that we've, a new hurdle that California has to leap over. So what they did this week is um, they've got this new thing where if um, the, they take the poorest quarter of the area of our county, and this is for almost for all the large counties. And uh, if the positivity rate for the testing in that group is not close enough to the, the rest of the group, then we cannot drop, we cannot improve our lockdown. We can't like lock down less. So uh, and it looks like, you know, I'm not sure why they pick positivity. They didn't pick cases. Um, they pick positivity, and so I, I'm thinking they pick positivity because that's the one statistic that they were lower on. So you can't pick, you can't pick a metric that we're going to pass on. Oh no, you have to look around and find the one metric that we're not going to pass on. Um, I'm I'm not sure exactly why the positivity rate might be higher, but I suspect it's because the poorer groups are going to be the people who. Um, Locally, there's a lot of Mexicans, and Mexicans in Mexico uh, tend to think that the the sea is, is more baloney. They just don't take it as seriously. So they're not, you know, if you go to the restaurants, there's, gonna, there's a lot of Mexicans still eating out, not a lot of white people. Um, so they're out and about. Um, also, the poor areas are going to be people who don't get to work from home. They're, you know, like essential labor that actually has to show up, cashiers, um, you know, delivery people, that kind of thing. So, so they're going to be out and about, basically. I think that's basically it. You've got a group of people that are not able to self-isolate because of their job does not, it's a labor job, and you can't just so easily do it online. So, so if there is this, you know, if there is a real virus, it's going to circulate amongst them. But notice that they don't look at death rates. Um, they're not looking that at all. So they have a higher positivity rate, but they're apparently... Uh, can't worry about the death rate. So I'm thinking the death rate can't be that much different. So that's interesting, though, when you really think about it. So positivity rate's higher, but death rate, not a problem. But seems like they've picked out this new thing now. So basically, we'll probably never be able to drop uh, any lower in the tier rates as we are now, as long as we still listen to the, the governor. Um, first of all, I can't quite figure out the algorithm they're using because they haven't coughed it up. Um, I looked at some samples and I was trying to calculate it and I can't figure out what percentage they're using. Part of the problem is I think you might have to know the percentage of, I mean, but it's a quartile, right? So it's 25%. So there should be a way for me to figure it out, but I, I just crunched all these numbers and I can't figure out any commonality. So is this like another thing the governor has a magic uh, number in his head that uh, he'll just cough up and y if you can't make it then you're screwed um, so it just seems to be like every time we make one of the metrics two weeks later there's a new metric uh, out of you know out of the ethers and this is the latest one that uh, so now we have to make sure the positivity rate of the poorest quartile is close enough to the other three quarters of the population. I don't see how you're going to do that as long as uh, they are all going to have the same jobs that they've had. Um, so they're still going to circulate and eventually, you know, all of them will probably get the C and probably not very many of them will be sick. But if they're doing antibody tests, if the tests cross-react with old coronaviruses, and if the tests cross-react with uh, the C that you may have had six months ago, and that C spreads all through that population, those people are going to continue to test positive over and over again for who knows how long. We'll never be able to get that down that low 
Um, if it ever does get down that low, then they'll probably just change the metric to something else because they change it every two weeks anyways. So um, it's just gotten kind of insane. And with this new metric, my coworker is really starting to, because um, I asked her about it. I'm like, what's the metric? She's like, well, she tr they started explaining it, and I just got so mad I couldn't listen anymore. And so she didn't, she couldn't, she couldn't tell me any info. I had to go and look, and she was just like so frustrated. Like she, I think that this has kind of pushed her over the edge now with this new baloney. And so I fed her a little bit more info about how they were, um, like some of this stuff I just said today. Not too much because I don't want to push her too far. Um, but I mean, some of it, I think if I tell her, it'll just overload her, but I've been picking on her little bit by little bit. She's coming around. She's starting to see. So it's, uh, that's what you got to do. I, I finally figured out after all these years that I just have to hold back a little bit sometimes kind of sense when they're starting to get overloaded and just stop and let them process what you've said already. So uh, another thing I heard today was um, one person at Pickleball um, knew one person who tested positive in an old folks home, no symptoms, tested positive twice, no symptoms. That person is like 90 years old and is sickly, you know, diabetes, heart problems, all this, but tested positive twice in a row, no symptoms. Uh, and nobody else in the home got it either, so very suspicious. I mean, this is a, this kind of person that should be dying of the sea, but no symptoms. Since when did effect turn to affect? When did the color gray turn to gray? I don't know that gray, the two kinds of gray, I sh that showed up like 10 years for me, 10 years ago for me. Effect was the, uh, the noun and affect was the verb for me for a really long time and that has not changed. And I, I tell you, I can't remember which is even my original now. I got so confused, I use gray with the E and gray with the Y. Um, interchangeably now. I'll use this two different ones in the same paragraph. I, I don't know what I can't remember. I got so confused by that years ago now I just um, I lost it. I lost the original. People around me getting tested all negative. Well yeah, the, you know um, the positivity here, I, don't, I think it was like 4% or something. So, you know, 4% out of, uh, 4 out of 100 people positive. That's it's not very high uh, locally in San Diego. I believe it's higher in California, but. In New York City, Cuomo locked the elderly down in nursing homes. Many died. Yep. You know, they don't, uh, they don't allow you any visitors so then they can do whatever they want which is you know so scary I just you can't trust them anymore I was taught G-R-E-Y is the proper spelling for the color people laugh and say that's incorrect I never heard of G-R-A-Y yeah, the rules keep changing um, like for a while, they would say that um, oriental was the correct word for um, for items like stuff, like furniture and beds and, you know, like non-humans. And then Asian was the right word for, for humans. But then the last time I checked, that rule wasn't that way anymore. So it just shifting timelines, I guess. I don't, I don't know. It shifts too fast, I think, to, to be really... Um, uh, anything else though I was taught to leave everything behind during the fire alarm geez yeah I know I mean like really you're, you're gonna go back and, and dig around for your mask while the, the, the buildings on fire because of a flu I mean you, and you can't and you're not allowed to use your shirt for the mask. it's just absolutely ridiculous it 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 makes no it's not even common sense 
That's what's so scary about it. It has gotten so far removed from common sense that I just, uh, and they train you to do, to leave everything behind. And now all of a sudden they're screaming at you because you don't have a mask. It's just totally ridiculous. Not to mention that they're treating people like crap. I mean, if you're so worried about the mask thing, then why don't you have a batch of backup masks there? They're not expensive. Compared to everything else, the cost in the, in the university, the cost of the mask would be so tiny. If this was really such an emergency situation, they would always have them. You know, I mean, it's just insanity. That's why I wear it, even though it's dangerous for me, because people are crazy, and it's not you. Um, I was, you know, I was on um, uh, remove. What was that channel? Remove the shackles or something? It was another. It's a, another Mandela channel, and there was somebody on there saying she got this mask that's like sequins, and it's like really, really thin, so you could totally breathe. And I'm like, give me the, the name of the, of the, the shop that sells it. Cause it was an Etsy store, but uh, they haven't coughed it up yet. But I'm like, that could be really useful for summer and for people who have asthma and stuff. Cause it, it's apparently it's just really thin. You can really breathe, but people can't see how thin it is. Cause it has these sequins that kind of hide it. Um, and so she got that so she can wear a mask and still breathe. And I'm like, I really am trying to find the, um, I'm going to see if I can get, get her to tell me where she got those. And they were only like three bucks or something. So that wasn't real expensive. But yeah, you could, if you have something that's basically almost non-existent over, then you'll, you'll be able to wear that thing and still breathe. Um, and then still, you know, avoid attacks by others. We have about 30 boxes of masks that are started. Give them out freely. You, see, that's the thing. I'm like, why be so evil? And it's like every Karen in the entire universe has now jumped to the front to be the soup Nazi. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get it. Um, you know what? I'm just going to um, harass them until they tell me. I, I put some um, notices up asking, and then if they don't answer, um, because other people were like, yeah, yeah, what's the name b behind mine, too? What happened was when they were doing their live stream, they had a lot of technical difficulties, and they thought they were screen sharing the location but uh, while they were doing it, but they weren't screen sharing. They, they didn't, we didn't get to see, they think they told us during the, the live stream. So I don't know if they're just not checking their, um, their messages. I mean, I don't know if that channel actually reads all of their comments or maybe she'll get around to it next week or whatever. So I'm trying to give her some time to answer the comments and then I'm gonna see if there is a way to directly um, contact them because they have like five or six people on doing kind of a round table when they have their live stream. And it's not the actual channel owner who, who knew the location. So that makes it more complicated because if I contact the channel owner and hopefully she can contact the person who knew the answer. So, but they're in, I don't know, but they were cute masks. I mean, ironically, I got to see the mask before they, they lost their screen share ability. She talked about it like five times, and she said she was going to put the link in the, in the description, but it ain't there. So I'm like, ah. They never answer. They never show live chat. Ah. You know, I think one time I, I got some kind of comment, but I'll, I'll try to catch them. Um. Patrick Roberts, you're, yeah, I, I know, just say no to the mask. The problem is that it's become mandatory. Um, you can't go into a store here without it. So I don't wear it uh, except for then. Uh, and in the summer, it's really hot. Like, I had to go get my taxes done. And if I don't wear the mask in there, then they could get sued. Um, and I, I like my tax preparer. And it's the same thing when I get my hair cut. If I don't have a mask on, and some Karen complains, they get shut down because of the requirements to stay open require that everybody in there have a mask and the hair, the entire salon can get shut down. And somebody's already complained once, so they've already got a black mark 
and if they get another one they can get shut down so I mean you, if I don't wear one I can get them shut down and I don't want that to happen so yeah you in some locations um, you don't really have that good an option Uh, there are masks with force to comply. Oh, you know what? There's, I have one that says, um, that has the, it doesn't say COVID-19, but it, it has the, um, the symbol from 1984 on it. People get it. Although, frankly, for the summer, I really just want to get a super thin one. And then I'll wear my, um, crabby ones in the winter when it's, you know, in the winter, it's not as bad wearing the mask because it's freaking cold. But in the summer, it really sucks. Like, you know, their air, their, their AC was broken, and I'm sitting there trying to breathe, and um, and then the this other guy comes out without a mask, and he's all scrambling to put it on. I'm like, don't even worry about it, dude. But the problem is if they, if some Karen complains, they can get shut down. So, you know, he's scrambling to put it on, even though he knows I don't give a rat's butt about it. And, you know... Uh, I just hope that it this some states have, have abandoned the mask, and I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. There's some hope for the universe, but there's not really hope for California unless, um, unless some of this the mayors and stuff really start putting their foot down on this because this has gotten ridiculous. Um, I think what the mayors here on the um, city council have been fighting like cats and dogs because we've got one person on the council that's pro mask and then we've got a like f i think there's five people on there we've got three that are sort of anti-mask but they don't want to make waves and then we have the screaming anti-masker and apparently it's been world war three for every council meeting uh, and so i don't know how that's going to go down but so basically there was a point where we thought we might have to lock down further and there was a big fight whether we were going to obey, but it turned out that our metrics just managed to keep us from locking down further. So they're like, okay, well, we won't, we don't have to fight it. Uh, but I don't know what'll happen if we are expected to lock down further. And so I'm waiting to see. Did you know that Whoopi Goldberg's real name is Karen Johnson? No, I didn't. But. I don't know. Does she, I mean, I haven't really heard her screaming about masks and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, toddlers aren't allowed to wear them here. If they are perfectly safe, then why? Um, yeah, I don't... That's interesting that they're not allowed to wear them. I think you have to wear them if you're over two years old here uh, in a lot of places. I, I don't know every state, but... Um, I think on the plane you have to wear them if they're, t and it's hard because some kids at two, like they're, they can be a terrible obnoxious brats. I mean, no offense to kids, but two year olds, you know, the terrible twos is named that way for a reason. They like to throw stuff. They don't listen. Can you imagine trying to keep an extra obnoxious two year old with a mask on that whole time? Whoopi is a multimillionaire for the past 20 years. Yeah, I know. But I mean, like, I don't automatically hate everybody who has money. Um, I'm not just going to assume that every last person who has money is horrible. Have found Callie to be quite light and airy. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what that means. I mean, we have good weather, but in the summer it can be very hot. It was 115 degrees here uh, a couple weeks ago. If this year was a book and I had to do a report, it would be breathing. Yeah, I can't breathe. Uh, yeah, there's a whole theme somehow spiritually. Um, there's been a lot of people who had respiratory infections late last year. Then you got the C thing. You've got the I can't breathe thing with the, um, with the, with the, with the demonstrations. And uh, then you got the mask thing. And then the, yeah. There's, there's something going on. Poor people are rich people without money. Well, you know, people who grew up differently are 
are different. I mean, not a hundred percent across the board, but the you know people who grow up rich are different than people or earn the money. If you have money for a while, you're different than someone who's still poor. I mean, I grew up poor, but now I have you know I'm middle class now, and and I'm different now than I was when I was poor. Um, I haven't forgotten, but I you know I definitely I'm different. Money insulates insulates definitely. Um, I don't have to worry as much as I used to because I don't have to worry about every twenty dollars worth of problems. Money can fix anything currently. No, I wouldn't go that far. It uh, still can't fix your health, and it can't make you happy. I'll tell you, rich people, um, as a class, I would say are some of the more miserable people I've ever met. I, I've worked for a lot of rich people when we painted houses. Um, you'd be surprised. A lot of these people did not earn their own money. They they were rich since they were young. Uh, the ones that earned it themselves, a lot of them appreciated it. Middle class people on average were just a lot more settled than the rich people. I, I think when you're just given stuff, you don't appreciate it. Um, you're worried about losing it because you're so used to having it. Like for me, okay, I really like my little middle class lifestyle a lot better than my poor lifestyle. And I don't want to go back to my poor lifestyle. But if something happened and I lost a lot of what I had, I know how I work myself out of it. And I'm fairly confident I could do it again. I've learned a lot on how to not be poor now. Um, it took me a while, but I've learned the mindset and how to build yourself out. And I have a lot of skill sets. And I'm pretty confident I could do it again. It would definitely suck. It takes a lot of work and it takes some years. But I feel like I have that ability. So I don't have the insecurity that somebody else who just got it all handed it to them. If you just hand people stuff, they don't know how to get it themselves. And they are clutchy because they are not going to be able to, they know they don't know how to, to get it themselves. You know, and so I think that makes a different mindset. Um, also, in order to come out of something like that, you have to, um, you have to, confront a lot of your own phobias and you have to work on your own issues a lot um, more than if you just get it handed to you. It's just not a challenge when you get it handed to you. So you're both, a f you're more fearful about not having it, but you also don't appreciate it. Um, it becomes like just a requirement for you. you. You don't think you can live without it. You don't know. Like I know I could live without a lot of the stuff I have. I don't want to, but I know I can. I've done it before. So I don't live in terror of, of not having that stuff. So it's just a whole different mindset. So uh, for all those people who think if you get money, you'll be happy, um, no, it helps. It does, but you have to be happy first. You, you almost really do, and I had to do that. I really had to make peace with the universe first, and that was how I was able to earn the money. That was how I was able to make the changes in my mind and my behavior and my activity and the way I manifested things, I had to change the way my mind worked first and then I got the money. Um, if you keep doing the exact same thing and you're the exact same person, you probably won't ever get any more money because if you do the same things that you always have, then you're gonna get the same outcomes, probably. I mean, that's not 100%, but probably. I mean, access to funds is helpful, absolutely. But this world is a manifestation world. As much as you think you're trapped, you never were. And your idea that you're trapped is what makes you trapped. It, it's, you think that it's all these things around you that are trapped. But I'll tell you, if you change your mind, and changing your mind is really, really the hardest part. You, you think that getting out of the trap physically is, but no, it's, it's here. It's all here. It, once you get out of it, you, it's so obvious. But when you're in it, it is so not obvious. And that is why it is so difficult. That you think that there's no opportunities. That you think that you're trapped by your environment and your situation. But what happens when you change your mindset is the opportunity just shows up. 
and it, it'll come out of the blue and it'll be in some way that you never thought possible. I mean, there's hundreds of ways where something can flop on your doorstep and uh, just be that one string, that one opportunity you needed. And it can, you know, I didn't even have any plans. I just fell onto how I got out of it. But I had changed the way my mind works first and then it just came. And I've seen other people do the same where they're trapped, they're trapped, they're trapped, they're trapped. As long as you think you're trapped, you're trapped. And, and that's like a huge lesson that I, I pray that people will learn faster than I learned because I didn't learn until I was in my 40s. And that's the other lesson. It's never too late. It only takes a couple years to turn things. So also remember that. A few years and you can totally change your life. So don't wait. I don't care. You know, I knew some guy. He was 60. He changed his life around. You can have a whole new business and a whole new life and a whole new career in a couple years if you change your mindset. So it, it's, you're not too late to do it. It's just so hard because the world, the world trains you to think you're trapped and uh, to be depressed and to think there's no opportunity and that things are so, things are unfair, but they're not so unfair that you can't get out of it. You can, you always can. It's hard when everything's so dark. Yes, that's the thing, is you have to change your minds. Everything is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, if you think you're trapped, then everything that's around you makes you look like you're trapped, and then that just can further convinces you that you're trapped. And so it just goes around and around and around like that. And so it's, it's so hard to even just, just give yourself a little bit, you know, just give yourself a little bit of hope. Just work on it a little bit by a little bit. It, and that's why I think that if we could all change the way our minds work in five minutes, I think our whole life could change in five minutes. But you can't, it's like nearly impossible to move your mind that fast, you know, to change your old habits, a lifetime of habits, a lifetime of ways of thinking, the ways your parents impressed on you to think about yourself, the way the media talks to you and makes you think, and, and convinces you things. Uh, it's, it's very hard to buck all that. And that's what you got to do. My wife spends all the money. See, okay, so you think you're trapped because she spends all the money. But there's like a hundred different ways that you could work with that. Um, you know, don't give her all the money. Talk with her. Set rules. Um, help her learn about other things. Learn how she, why she does that. Get a better relationship with her. Whatever you're doing now is obviously not working, so try a different tact. Um, maybe if you're nagging her constantly, stop nagging her and try asking her nicely. If you're asking her nicely, try um, getting really serious with her and laying down the law. Just try something different. You know, th however you think about it now, try thinking about it in a different way. Uh, and just see. See, you know, see what happens. Try different, a whole different tactic or five or six or seven of them until you find one that works. You'll be surprised if you, if you think of someone different and you treat them different. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll totally change the way they behave also in surprising ways. I mean, it doesn't work every time, but just, just try things. Pull on every string. I'll tell you, if you've been doing something for 10 years, and it's not working, try a whole different thing. Really think about it. Um, what way might work better? I'll tell you, I was stuck in my ways for like 40 years. And so you can imagine <laughs> that it was an uphill battle of being poor and I was sort of the, I'm kind of, the, I was kind of the queen of I'm trapped and poor me and all that. I was like the queen of that. I'm like, that's why I can spot that from a mile because I was immersed in that for so long. I have used them all. I know them all. I wasn't super verbally whiny, but in my head, I was thinking all those thoughts. And uh, so that's why I'm like, I know that story. And I still have to fight that. You know, it's not like it magically all disappeared, but I... Um, I'm something I constantly work on. Even the Pope has, well, I've got to say that one. <laughs> Do 
Chinese finger trap, just let go. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so simple, but but yet not so easy because like I said, you know, 40 years of bad habits. They're habits I grew up with, I didn't even know they're bad and I would just keep, you know, berating myself to try harder. I'm like, you know, at some point I finally realized I've been doing this for 40 years and it ain't working. Poor me is a popular mindset. Oh yes, uh, I think it is very popular and only getting more so. I'm telling you, I am the expert at that mindset. I have probably engaged in every tactic. Okay, so anyways, uh, I think I've complained enough about the C. Um, I only got, this one is somewhere on there, but I don't remember. Somehow I just had already put it up. I'm just gonna go in order because I might go crazy if I, um, all right, so. Um, <laughs> Lord of the Flies, that movie and book. Um, do you, if those of you who know the book, do you or do you not remember cannibalism in that story? That's the, that's the question to answer. No cheating, no looking, just from memory. Those of you who know of it, was there cannibalism in there? Um, so I'm going to let you answer that, and then I'm going to go on to some other stuff. And this one, uh, the Lord of the Flies ones, is from Jule, Julie's Journey, in case I forget to mention that later. Uh, notice this change. This one is a change for her. It's actually not a change for me, but I noticed a lot of people did remember her way. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I think it's especially interesting. So... I'm gonna go ahead and put it up, even though it is not one of my Mandela's. Okay, now this one is one of my Mandela's for you also to answer. The second one is uh, Cat Mandu. How do you spell it? Uh, no cheating, don't Google, just what do you remember? Cat Mandu, if you remember. Okay, so those two, those are the answers we, that uh, we will look for. And now I'm gonna go on to this third one which is not a question one. All right, so Katmandu one, that one is from John Austin. Uh, notice this change for him, which is also a change for me. And this, this third one is also going to be one from John Austin. Uh, he noticed the lion, the faces of the lions look different. And I have been tracking this change in my kitty cat. Uh, I noticed also, not as extensively in the lion, but um, this photo kind of shows it rather extensively. Let's see if I can get this one to be large. Oh, it's running slow. Come on, computer. All right, so lion face. What do you notice? To me, it's kind of smacks you in the head, in the head, the change here. Um, coloration change. You can see it also on this one. And in my little house kitty, I am seeing it also. Not quite as blatant as in these uh, face shots of these lions here. Uh, I don't remember seeing that even last time I was looking at lions. I, I talked extensively about the mane. Uh, used to be the black was here and it's moving back. And that their mane has moved onto their, like, their stomach and on their elbows and stuff. Uh, but I haven't talked about this particular one. So I guess I'm making you answer everything this time. To, that's the type of day we're having. Do, do, do. So let's see what you guys found. I made my voice more spooky. I don't know, I'm kind of like a little deep voiced today, I think. I've also moved the mic around a lot, so it might be a little different because I've been futzing with the computers. But yeah, it does, it's a little deep today. Okay, let's see what we got. If 
you're having trouble in life, remember that this reality is just point zero zero bunch of zeros, one percent of great spiritual beyond. Yeah, but it's a sucky point zero zero one percent sometimes. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. It is. That's why I try not to be too mad at people when they're act stupid and stuff because it's hard. And, you know, we're told all these fake things, these wrong things since we're children. And then we're supposed to somehow figure out that they're wrong, like money brings happiness. No, not really. It doesn't. Um, you know, what's important in life is not cars and all these things that's constantly on TV, yet we're trained that. And, you know, even a lot of us, even our parents thought that. And, and even though they may not have come out and said it, it was kind of an indirect training because they believed it dark wolf's den is in welcome welcome uh sounds like nobleness d is in there somewhere welcome up oh, there you are my damn name is still split oh yes yeah, speaking of names that was another weird thing this morning uh, i went to pickleball met a new guy there i mean there's always new people so I'm, I'm like what so he's like what's your name i said my name is eva and he's just like well that's a really unusual name he's all oh i've never heard of eva before and i swear it's just starting to freak me out how many people think they've never heard of the word name eva i picked eva as my nickname because it was super common and easy and nobody ever got confused and now I've got this apparently super exotic, weird name. And this guy's old, too. I mean, he's older than I am, so it's not like he's some spring chicken that never heard of names from 40 years ago. So I don't know. It's hard for me to keep my face from not doing weird things when, when people are talking like that because I think normally people with unusual names – always knew their name to be unusual and i'm sitting there going what do you mean it's unusual so i don't know it, it seems like um i don't know i mean did he really grow up in a world where there was no evas in the whole his whole world i have to admit i haven't met any in the last 10 years All right, so you don't remember, um, nobleness does not remember cannibalism. Try to accept and honor your dark melancholic side, integrate it that. Yeah, you can't really just squish it. You just have to deal with why it's like that. You know, you have to kind of go in there and dig around and see why you're, why, where it's coming from and integrate it because um, just trying to smash down bad feelings, it doesn't work. They, they're not going away. they got to be dealt with, and it's, it's just work, you know. Uh, some of it's just habit, like repetitive negative thinking. Okay, Shari, does, Shari D does not remember any cannibalism. No, Lord Freiber doesn't. All right, Dark Wolf remembers like me with a C with a K A T. That's the old way. Chariots of Faith, New Way. Lady Sainin remembers the old way. Songs that are catchy, old way. Shari remembers the new way. I'll tell you this one. I think changed about maybe a, uh, six months to a year ago because I have seen that. Uh, my old way was K A T M A N D U. But if you look it up now, it's Kath Mandu, like Shari's writing it with an H. Kath Mandu. Um, looks like it's about two thirds with a T and one third with the, the TH. If I ever get out of this place, I'm going to Kathmandu. Yep. I think I think we'll get through it, and um, I'm I'm God, I'm gonna. I got to find me an employee to hold down the fort so I can travel more. I'm so glad I went to the uh, conference last year, the um, Mandela Effect conference, because who knew, you know? Who knew that we wouldn't just be able to go again some other year? All 
I feel like there's an H in there, but cat mandu. Interesting. You know, it's been around, I think, long enough that it's starting to, you know, percolate into people's brains with the H. Doing our game is more like trying not to see it as a failure, just pres be present with it, and also in sense of honor as part of you that has a purpose. Yeah, I try to think of it as a learning thing, like, um, you know, you, you're, you start out here and, and you go to here. I mean, if we were already perfect, there'd be no point in coming here. So the goal is to learn as much as possible. So you don't want to fixate on how you're not perfect yet. You want to fixate on how much progress you can make and how much conversion you can do. Um, and just, you know, revel in that and not the final, not the final, um, you know, Enjoy the the ride and all that business, but or at least appreciate how far you can come. White eyes. Okay, so lion face for me is this white under the eyes. Um, that is just new for me. And my little kitty, I have. It's interesting. I didn't really look at the lions, but my little kitty, I've been watching it develop under there. Um, he's he's changed a lot since we first got him. He was three years old, approximately, when we got him. We've had him for a couple years. And he used to be uh, just kind of uh, light, like a medium gray with a darker gray stripes. So over the last two years, he has um, gotten like a really silvery area on his top of his nose. And now he's starting to grow these black lines from the bottom of his eyes down along his nose like that. Almost kind of like the uh, cheetahs are, but very light right now. Uh, he's grown white under the eyes and up in the top here that he didn't used to have. Uh, the top of his back has gotten really dark so that you don't see stripes anymore. So I'm, I always joke he looks, now he looks like a rat from the top because he uh, is all gray from the top. His underside has gotten really white and his chin has gotten really, really, really white. Um, his tail used to just have rings, but in the last few months, it's, it's got a line along the, the rings. Um, so it's more like cross hatches. And then, uh, that's starting to fill in on the, on the, so he's turning into like a domino because he's like getting dark on the top and light on the, on the bottom. So it's just, it's been really weird watching, um, watching the change. His tail, I think has grown another inch or two. And now he walks around with his tail up like this and then bent over. So we, we kind of joke that he's like a lemur or something because he'll walk around with his... I, I think tails are just longer in this timeline. You know, horns are longer. Um, coloration. I, I definitely... Whoever said uh, lions have gotten more expressive, I definitely agree with that. I think um, a lot of the animals have gotten way more expressive. And in a way that is very human to me, um, I think that we're having a very strong influence on how these creatures are developing. Uh, because a lot of the, the new animals have, you know, either a derpy look or a disgusting look or a fierce look. Or, but it's all, all to the human uh, imagination, the human sensibilities. Uh, I'm, you know, I, it's like we are really driving the way these animals are developing. Yep, Scout, spell checker says there's an H. I tried to put in the T. Now you can still find a lot of residual of individual people writing articles with the, with the, just the T for Kathmandu, but uh, all the official locations say it's an H, and I can't find any record of it having changed. Like, uh, like say, oh, people used to do it like this, but now they're making it more PC or anything. I can't find anything like that. Sacrament bread and blood is magic ritual performed by the masses. Oh, yeah, you're talking about that religious where they... I always thought that was weird when I was a kid. I'm like, seriously, we're eating Jesus' blood and flesh? That was just... I always thought that was very strange. 
I mean, I didn't spend a lot. I didn't stay up late worrying about it. But I'm like, this is pretty whack, you know, because I didn't grow up in a religious household. And sometimes if you grow up with something, you just don't question it. But if if you're 10 years old or, or 12 and then you suddenly hear about it, you're like, that's crazy, man. It's yeah, it's just symbolism, symbolism, but it's weird symbolism. I'm like, wait, if I like somebody, I don't eat them for breakfast. I mean, you know, that's crazy. How is that going to help? Especially in a culture where cannibalism is supposed to be a bad thing. You know, <laughs> if you really look at it from an outsider's perspective, it is crazy business. The whites under the eyes seem like it would blind the lion in the well because football players, but black. Yeah, I don't know. Now my cat's eyes have gotten real complicated because there's like, there's like black on the, um, on the, the wet line is, as us women call it, the, the, the part that goes right up against the eye that is still kind of wet. And then there's white under it, and then there's more black. And so it's really complicated. Um, so there's like every color. I'm sure that the Mandela will come up with some excuse why it's good for animals on the savanna or some blah, blah, blah. And there, you know, there's always some kind of storyline. I noticed I hadn't deja vu for a while, then boom, it came back. Hum. You know, I've only only had one deja vu. It was like about five months ago, sitting in traffic. That's the only time I've ever experienced a deja vu. So I'm kind of weird that way. That was my first time. So I'm like, oh, so that's what it's like. Okay, so, yeah, um, people... Do some people do remember cannibalism uh, in Lord of the Flies? And it was uh, the character named P Piggy. They remember him actually being killed and eaten instead of just getting killed. And they thought it was interesting, and I do too, because there's actually they do eat a pig in there. Um, and of course, skeptics are saying you're just confusing uh, a human character with the pig character, which I find highly unlikely. I just can't imagine that I would ever uh, th confuse a simple act of catching a pig and eating it with killing human and eating them. That there's just the whole sentiment and the whole impact and the, and uh, the whole that's just a whole different thing. And just having a similar word there, I just can't imagine that I would be that confused. Now, for me, there was no cannibalism, but uh, a number of people remember Piggy being killed, um, and then a f I think there was like one person remembered Simon being killed, like two of them, Piggy and Simon. And there was one person who remembered the pilots um, having died, and then they eat the pilots, uh, the ones that, that died. They didn't kill them, but they did eat them, so... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's that that's the case in some timelines. I, I especially think it's interesting that there's a, a character named Piggy in there when you really think about it. Um, that's just the kind of thing Mandela likes to do, confuse like that. Um, a little bit different in every timeline. Some words that'll confuse you a little. Okay, so that was that one. So yeah, for me, Katmandu has changed spelling with now has an H, and we've got the white under the eyes. Uh, those are both John Austins for the um, lions. Okay. This next one is from Thomas Larson. Let's see. Don't remember Piggy being eaten. His skull was crushed. Yeah, some people remember him being eaten after he was killed. Okay, this one. So apparently they had rockets in uh, 1804 now. This is from Thomas Larson. Um, so they had rockets in the Napoleonic Wars 
and they had ro rockets in the War of 1812. Um, <laughs> and they even had rockets in um, some even, and that was the Congreve rocket. And then they even had rockets before that. Let's see, Congreve. So the Congreve rocket. Wiki. So this is another um, backwards in time deal, I think, with the tech, tech back in time. Let's see if I can find that. Okay, so there's some of the Congreve rockets. So they would shoot these. They could go pretty far. Um, they had between a hundred. They had between uh, six pounds up to three hundred pounds. These eighteen thirteen rockets would go twenty five to twenty seven feet. But then, interestingly. It, the uh, ones that they were modeled after, which they're calling it, and I, you know, I don't know the um, pronunciation. Oh, here's the 32 pounder, so that's a big beast. Uh, they call it the the Mysore Wars, which is like the wars between India and the Brits. Apparently, the Indians, the the India people, um, had rockets, and they were like they could go like what well, was some kind of ridiculous amount of. It was like a half a football field or something, some ridiculous long distance that they could shoot these things. And they were, uh, they had those since um, 1780, they had those. And even maybe before that, because they're not really sure when they got those, it sounded like. Um, so they had rockets from boats back then. I mean, <laughs> they just didn't have that in my timeline back that far. So uh, you can see all these images, 1814 shooting rockets from boats. Oh, they used them for whale hunting in 1821. Uh, it was just harpoons for me. They did not shoot whales with rockets in 1821. Um <laughs> <laughs> Some of these freaking wars, I don't think, were in my timeline, too. At least I heard of the War of 1812, um, Napoleonic Wars, yes. Um, I've never heard of Bombardment of Algiers, 1816. Uh, I've never heard of uh, the First Anglo-Burmese War. Um, I've never heard of Congress, Poland, and November Uprising. The Opium Wars, I've just heard of for the first time a couple years ago, and I was... Um, Quite confused about that one. The New Zealand Wars, never heard of it. Triple Alliance War, never heard of it. I've heard of Crimean War, but not Indian Rebellion. This is like about half the wars now um, I'm very suspicious of. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay, next one. Um, spelling one again. All right, so if you were to spell... The following sentence, how would you spell the word breathe? If the, if the sentence was, I breathe air, how would you spell breathe? And no cheating, no looking. This is one I just saw. I think I, this one showed up about six months ago, actually. I think I have saw this a couple times. But uh, how do you spell I breathe air? How do you spell breathe? That's this one. Oops. This is a video I plan to watch if I get around to it. I just, I get a lot of videos I want to watch and I just don't always get to it. And sometimes the computer crashes and I lose the link or something. I've heard theories that Egypt could have been harnessing nuclear power. You mean like in the past, I assume. I don't know what's going to show up in this timeline. I wouldn't really, at this point, I, I really, 10 years from now, I don't know what kind of history I'll be looking at, but I bet it's going to be some whack stuff. I think there's going to be some stuff. Uh, that's why I've been watching this Tartaria thing, because I think it's developing in our timeline, and I'm really curious to see, um, with the getting the um, energy from the ethers, like the it, harvesting energy, um, I think that that's going to develop, and that's going to be something we'll be able to do, because the environment is changing, the atmosphere has changed, lightning has changed, the way light is, the way water behaves, so... I think it almost has to be that the way energy 
is moves like electricity and electromagnetism. Those have all had to have changed. And it may well be that we're in a position now where we can harvest energy. Uh, I don't think we could do that on Sagittarius arm, but here on Orion arm, I think that we will be able to, or there's a good chance of it or something like that. You know, I always thought that we would develop our science to um, learn new things, but it's almost like we've developed our environment to have new, better science. You know, it's totally ridiculous sounding, but uh, that seems to be what we're doing. We didn't develop our science. We just changed our, our physics. It's random if you don't mean it. When I'm talking about your cat, you said when we got him. Are you talking about your partner? No, that is the, uh, the, the other person who lives on the property. He's a friend of mine, and he lives in the, in the guest house. And we kind of share him because the cat just showed up and I'm like really busy and uh, he doesn't have any money. So I pay for everything and he's supposed to take care of the cat. But you know, if he's not around, I'll take care of the cat and stuff. But, and he's sort of, he sort of slowly became ours cause he just started showing up more and more and more. So we never, there was never really like a point where we said, I got a cat. It's just like, hey, the cat, that cat is back here. Let's pick a name. We got to call him something. And next thing you know, he has a name. And then it's like, the poor thing is full of fleas. Maybe we should buy some flea treatment for the poor thing. And then, and pretty soon we're taking care of him already. Maybe he's our cat. So that's kind of how it went. There will be laser weapons in World War One. I. I know, I know, I know. I mean... <laughs> the Napoleonic Wars has rockets and we've got jets in World War II now, so. Just like the Challenger exploding in grade school, we watch it live. That never happened in any other time. Mass trauma. Yeah, you know, I. and then you look at like the flat earth thing um, and then they're like, so they get all these teachers from the general populace, um, and then they all end up getting killed. So then we never, I mean, I don't know. It just, um, there, it's kind of an interesting coincidence, you know, the, the one time they get a bunch of people from the general public instead of paid astronauts, and they all get killed. I don't know. I mean, maybe it, I remember gunpowder, but no rockets. Yeah, they had gunpowder from the Chinese, but um, but that was it for me. All right, so it looks like it's fifty fifty here. I have never heard of the of the spelling B R E A T H E until six months ago. About. I did see it and somehow it didn't fully click, but I thought that word looked really weird. So now that the current story is that um, I breathe air should be spelled B-R-E-A-T-H-E because breathe is a verb and, and without the E is a noun. So if you say my breath is strong, then it would be no E. But if you say I breathe air, then it has an E. The verb has an E now, basically. Now, if you're not from, you know, if, if English isn't your native language, you may not, it's just little pid piddly stuff. But, um, but for native people, I have never seen the word with the E until about six months ago. Um, let's see, we got about, it looks like about 50-50. Old school people, George, George, John Bernard Shaw, Lord Frybread, Lisa O'Brien. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever even seen it with an E? You know, the thing is, I was like an English AP student and stuff. I mean, the, I can see forgetting, but at least I would want, you know, like maybe when you're writing, you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that rule. But I have never seen it before in my 40 something years of life until six months ago with an E. And I'm like, what the F is that? I went and looked up the rule. CERN seems very hush hush this year. Didn't they turn off CERN for a while or something? 
All right. And then we get a slew of new, new school people. Have you seen the 1800s desktop fan that used kerosene wick for power? Yeah, they've got a lot of weird stuff using steam power, too, like these little mini steam engines and stuff uh, that I'm very suspicious about. The antenna is channeling the frequency around us. Sound can manipulate water and sand in amazing ways. Yeah, but if you notice, those videos really only just started showing up in the last few years. I don't remember any videos with... Like all those videos with uh, weird vibrations vibrating the sand and all that stuff. I'm very suspicious of those. Science rules are changing, yep. What, did I lose it again? Chat disconnected. Please wait while we try to reconnect you. Please try again later. It doesn't say I lost internet though. I'm going to try to reload this and see if I can get the chat back. Okay, so, yep, breathe. Um, I don't know if any of you never seen the E before like me, because I have, like, never seen that. All right, uh, I got that one. All right, I've covered the, the like, Tao's hum, and there there was like three, four, five different hums now um, of the different places in the world that had the mysterious hum. Well, apparently now it's like everywhere. It's now the global hum. Because <laughs> it started out as just the Tao's hum, and then it spread to these other places. So it's the global hum now. What is the mysterious global hum? See if I could find the original here. Okay, so if you read this article, what is the mysterious global hum? And is it simply noise pollution? Basically, they're going to say that they checked all these different noise uh, monitoring systems and they weren't really able to pin it down. Um, and then they just kind of guess on it. Um, they they said one person thought it might be EMF, so he went into like an EMF blocked room and he said the sounds were actually louder in the EMF blocked uh, area than they were in the non-EMF blocked area. Um, some people are saying it might be like ELF, which is extremely low frequency sound waves, um, but basically they, they don't know is the end answer here. Um, a couple things that I did find in my recent research on it, and I don't know if this is going to change, but the current storyline is 2 to 4% of the population can hear the hum, and that it sounds like um, an idling truck engine. I don't know if I hear it. I do know that I have a whole lot of different noises I hear, but I don't really hear one that really sounds like an idling truck engine. I'll tell you when I, I heard when I heard that statement, the only time I've heard something that sounds like an idling truck engine is if you're about to go out of body travel, there's this thing called the vibrations. And that is a lot like an idling truck engine. Um, and sometimes it gets like faster revving and slower revving. But uh, I've not heard um, of all the tinnitus or whatever you want to call it sounds I hear. And there's a whole range of them that I can focus on if I want to. Uh, I don't hear an idling truck engine sound. Uh, there's the one that sounds like far away running water through pipes, and there's the whiny electrical fluorescent light sound, and um, a couple others, but not the truck engine one. So I don't know if I'm like not in the two to four percent or what. But um, then when I went online though and tried to hear recreations of the various like Taos hum and this and that, they were all different. Every one of them, I'm like. 
so I don't know. I'm not sure what the hum is even supposed to sound like or if it's different in different timelines, but uh, it is spreading. Uh, the other thing they said is uh, 2 to 4% of people hear it, and it is more common in uh, city environments than, than rural. So I, that's the first time I've ever heard that claim. I don't know if that's going to stay like that or what, but... Um, if the sounds are coming from inside the house, get outside the house. That is another one they did mention, yes, that people tend to hear it more inside the house than outside the house. But you can still hear it outside the house. There was actually weird sound when I was a kid that I heard inside the house. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this one, but when I was a kid, when everything was really quiet, especially at night, but not all the time, it wasn't... Now, it seems like the Taos, they do say it, the hum comes and goes, but this one would also come and go, and there would be times when I would hear. It was a grumbly noise that sounded like somebody put rocks in a dryer, like a clothes dryer, and slowly was tumbling them. Because it would sound like they go, like it was slowly tumbling. But you couldn't quite pinpoint the noise because you would turn your head and it would sound like come over here and then you'd listen over here. And it was, it was in the house. You would hear it in the house. Um, and I could never figure it out. And then I went over to my friend's house and slept over and I could hear it at her house. And so I commented. I said, oh, you have that weird noise. And then she's like, oh, my God, you can hear the noise too because we could hear it, me and her, but her brother couldn't hear it, and my parents couldn't hear it, and her parents couldn't hear it. So only the kids could hear it, but not all the kids could hear it. Like, other kids would come over, and they couldn't hear it. So it was basically, like, us two that could hear it. But we would verify, because it would start, and I'd be like, it started, and she's like, correct. And then she would also be able to tell me when it stopped. And I'm like, yes, correct, that is when it stopped. So, uh, but it didn't sound like an idling truck engine, and I've never heard it. When I got older, somehow I stopped hearing it, and then I moved, and then, you know, I wonder now if I could go back, I'd hear it. But, but who knows? You know, maybe it's not on the Orion arm. Who the heck knows? I keep clicking on that. Yeah, it was creepy, actually, I have to tell you. Left a link of a lion image compare under your last video. Email to your Yahoo. Okay, I'll try to remember to look at it. I've heard a weird choir of chants. I don't, you know, I, I think I've covered this before that they're saying that, you know, hearing voices in the, in the sound of the a running fan and stuff is uh, not that unusual. In this timeline, in, in this Orion arm, uh, even science is starting to say, oh, it's, you know what, it turns out it's not that unusual and you're not crazy. I think this stuff, you know, the veil is getting thinner and more and more people are hearing weird stuff. And so science is starting to say, oh, this isn't that strange anymore. So try not to get too freaked out by it. Uh, I sometimes now think I hear stuff in fans and stuff. And, um, and I never had that before when I was, you know, the first 40-something years of my life. It's just the last few years. If reality changed this much so far, just imagine how weird it could get. I know, I know. I know, I know. I, 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 ne I, even after the Mandela started, I don't think I ever really thought that it would go this far, this fast. People still wouldn't see it. Um, you know, I've got people in my life that never saw anything like that was in my old life. I mean, they're, I guess, from this timeline or something. It's just weird. You're talking to people and they've never heard your name before. A name that, you know, it'd be like, it would be like if you, your name was John and then suddenly everybody started saying that they'd never heard the word John before. I mean, that's how it is for me. Oh, John, what a weird name. I've never heard that name before. I thought it would, should be June. June, are you sure it's not June? 
I've never heard John before. I mean, what would you, how do you react to something like that? You know, I'm trying to sit there and act normal and keep my face in like a normal look. So I'm not going, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just freaked me out. Eva, that was like the most commonest name. Well, not the most commonest, but it was an extremely common name. Now I've got this weird exotic name, but it's not. I mean, it's like just some kind of tripped out sci-fi novel, I swear. All right. Da -da -da -da. All right, Global Hum. Okay, so when I was researching Global Hum, I just ran into this, which I thought was slightly interesting. Microwave auditory effect. One thing good about the wiki, you may hate wiki or whatever, but it does have like um, the little thing on the bottom where it shows you related subjects. And I do find some really interesting subjects when I uh, look down on some of the articles. Um, also known as the microwave hearing effect or the fray effect. Uh, so apparently when there's pulsed or modulated radio frequencies that are supposed to be like sub-audible, uh, humans will hear weird stuff like clicks or even speech uh, induced by these sounds. These uh, Basically, it's kind of like variations of EMF um, are beamed at you, and then you hear stuff that isn't in there, like your, it triggers your hearing weird or something. And they call it the microwave auditory effect. Um, then th maybe it's thermoelastic expansion of portions of the auditory apparatus. Um, looks like they're flailing here on some kind of concept about why. Um, response to modulated electromagnetic energy. So basically you got EM, EMF um, can cause you to hear weird stuff is the short version of this. Clicking, buzzing. Um, heard reported by some workers at modern-day microwave transmitting sites that emit pulsed microwave radiation uh, different uh, between 200 megahertz down to 3 gig up to 3 gigahertz has been reported and uh, they've reported them at ranges that are um, near the limit of safe exposure. So it's within what's considered safe exposure. You can still hear, some people can still hear this weird stuff. All right, and then you get into the, um, apparently there's this thing called voice to skull or V2K um, research that was done by um, Oh, some military branch or another's, and uh, that they could beam sound straight into your head. And of course, you're a conspiracy theorist if you think that this could be your problem, even though this um, this tech was researched and supposedly exists. But oh no, you're crazy if they think that you got it used on you and whatever. But um, I mean, granted, um, if you're an unimportant person, you probably didn't get it used on you, but still. All right, so, uh, yeah, I've never heard of that, though, like, EMFs in the normal range even can trigger, like, sounds in your head, basically, is what they're saying. I've not heard of that. Okay, um, logo change one. You can thank YouTube for this one. Uh, this advertiser came on. I was just laughing because I have never seen Frank's Red Hot spelled like this. And apparently it's always been this way. The D and the H are like combined. I think it looks stupid. but Because it doesn't really look like Red Hot anymore. And now it likes, looks like Rio Hot. Rio Hot. The D doesn't look very D-E. R -E, so the D and the H are totally slammed together now on Frank's Red Hot. I've um, never seen that. If you look at the Logopedia, it's always been that way. Always. Okay. 
That's my first time seeing that. Granted, I don't check Frank's Red Hot every five minutes, but so since I was eight years old, it's been that way when it was invented. Uh, I don't, do any of you remember it being like that? It's strange looking to me. Looks totally better without the white under the lion's eyes. Yeah, no, that wasn't on there. I, <laughs> there's no freaking way. There's no way. Uh, that I, I think that one's really new too, because I look at the animals fairly often, and I have not seen that before. The cat one, I've been looking at it the last month. Uh, my own little kitty eye changes uh, there with the white, and it's just been the last like month, like the last four weeks. So I think that that was this last month or so for the lions. Like bits of unrelated. Yeah, when I think I hear voices, but I can never quite make out what they say. And, uh, and sometimes I'm curious and I strain to hear it. But then a part of me is like, doesn't want to, I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll just suck it up and try really hard to hear what they're saying. I hear voices when I'm going to sleep. I do. Actually, I really do hear voices and like whole sentences and stuff when I'm going to sleep. I, there, it just seems like there's like about 5,000 conversations and they're mostly really boring crap. Uh, but I can hear um, this and voices saying different stupid useless stuff and it's like really, sometimes really boring commentary. Um, but yeah, they're whole sentences. Every now and then I'll write them down or something if I wake back up. I also hear it a lot I'm waking when I'm waking up. I think there's just like a, a zone I go through where there's like all this chitter chatter. And that's why I wonder what we're kind of picking that up through the like the fans and stuff. Um, I'll tell you, most of it's really just boring. I, they say crazy people are, you, you know, you don't hear like they're telling you to kill yourself or kill the neighbor. I'm like, no, they're talking about like, rye bread and stuff you know i mean like it's just not even worth hallucinating <laughs> the emmy gives me hope everything can change yeah that's that's definitely i think that this whole um virus thing would have been a lot harder if it wasn't for the Mandela because I just now don't take life as seriously I'm like this all could just you know whatever's fact now tomorrow could suddenly be uh oh no wait we were wrong the whole time and you don't have to think about how ridiculous it is because even the most ridiculous change can can magically happen so we're not stuck with it you know Makes your bones vibrate with a standard external source. Uh, what are we talking about here? Are you talking about that V2K thing? I'll hear someone scream, but no one did, and it'll be loud. Um. Oh, huh, interesting. I've heard a couple times... Not recently, but when my mother was still alive, a couple times I heard her yelling my name like she just wanted my attention. And, um, but then she wasn't even home. But I actually thought she really did. It was that realistic. Like, because sometimes she'll yell and she just wants to know if I have any, uh, do you have a cup of sugar or something? And um, it would be that, you know, but it would be pretty loud because she'd be trying to yell it so I could hear it all the way into the back of the house. And a couple of times I thought she did that, and I went out and go, what do you want? And she's her car's not even there. Oh, yeah, sometimes I have songs in my head I hear. I also do hear songs, um, like, that I've never heard before. I wish I was a musician, because then I could get up and play them, um, just songs that, I don't know, exist in the dream world or something. Maybe they suck, but at the time I think they're good. There's been a few times when I wish I could um, play those. I wonder how you know musicians if how many uh, songs they get from the that kind of thing. I woke up once hearing people in the other room, but I was home alone. Um, I don't know. For me, I know that they're coming from not this 
like i know they're not it sounds the same as through my ears but yet i know it's not through my ears usually so that doesn't fool me like i know it's the like the dream world or something a lot of them have really nice voices too just interesting ones all right so that one's done do, 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 do. Okay, i flipped it over Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know if you live. You've probably heard of the Carrington event. I think that it by itself is probably a Mandela for me, but an older one. Uh, so the Carrington event was um, showed up what a couple years ago, where they were saying, "Oh, in 1859, there was this giant geomagnetic storm that caused all these problems in the." Um, like it caused all this um induction current in the wirings and stuff uh basically kind of a solar flare storm kind of problem uh, caused electrical dis disruptions blackouts blah, blah blah and they called it the carrington event okay so lately there's been all this yammer that there could be a giant solar flare that's one of the latest fear porns of the recent years and, oh, we already had one in 1859, and it was called the Carrington event. So now, all of a sudden, they're saying, oh, the Carrington event is not unique. So we got more of them. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on this stuff because we were talking about not remembering all these pandemics. A lot of us don't remember, like, the swine flu pandemic being a big deal and the Spanish flu pandemic, uh, we don't remember that. Um, and then now we've got this, I don't know, fakish, uh, suspicious pandemic. So now they're now they keep like adding, adding more and more of these like solar flare events keep slurping into the timeline. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. Um, is that going to be the next kind of event that we're going to have to deal with? Um, the Carrington event was not unique, so they're adding more of these solar flare events into the past now. Let's see, where is it where they say where it was? Um, 1859, there was uh, something similar. They're just saying, oh, well, there wasn't, you know, wiring and stuff back then. The most ferocious solar storm in recorded history engulfed our planet. It was the, okay, that was the Air Carrington event. But they were saying that there was other ones. Okay, um, the great storm of mid-September 1770, when extremely bright red auroras blanketed Japan, I'm going to have to find that. Um, let's see if this shows the image. There was a very weird image of these bright beams of light. Let's see if I can dig that up. Um, that was drawn. Let's see. Um, okay, found. Of, and they're saying it was twice the size of the Carrington Sunspot Group, paintings, diary entries, and other newfound records from China to bring some of the lowest latitude auroras ever spread over a period of nine days. All right, let me see if I can find uh, the imagery. The imagery of the drawings of um, this event were creepy. Let me see if I can find that again. Oh, well, basically there was a um, a drawing. Here it is. This is not the the same one, but it's very similar. Um, where these red, like these insane red lines, were. Um, this is the one I was looking at. That would be freaking creepy. Uh, maybe we'll get something like that. I don't know. There's been so many weird visual um, phenomena lately. That's why that one really caught my eye somehow. I mean, 
this is a fairly accurate drawing here. If you look at this, this person spent a lot of time getting these people and these little huts and the trees are all to scale and they've got really good um, perspective and everything is all perfect. And then you get this mess over here, um, very carefully delineated spacing between these creepy ass red lines. I mean, <laughs> you know, you one, one is tempted to suspect that that is what it looked like. And um, that is some weird business. And this one is not that different. And then this one here is yet another one. They're very specifically, have you ever seen an Aurora that looks like that? I certainly have never. That, I actually have never seen one that looks like that either. I don't know if that's, a, supposedly that's supposed to be legit. The Auroras are definitely over the top here and there's a lot more red and stuff. Um, reds and purples, uh, a lot more actually but uh yeah totally weird yeah it was like greenish a little bit of blue now it's got all this purple and red i'm off planet and dreams opening portals bunch of people i know in the dream but don't know in this dream yeah, I do. There's a lot of times people I know there, but I don't know here. Sometimes there's people I know here mixed with with ones I don't or I know over there. What if everything went back to normal? Oh, wouldn't that be a trip? <laughs> Suddenly, I don't think it's going to happen, though. You know, we had to go so slowly bit by bit, and it just seems like it's such a, a, lab, a laborious process making these shifts. I don't think they can magically go back. I, I think we'd probably just explode and die if it changed that fast. Tesla knew ether was real. In order for Einstein's theory to work, he just ignored the ether. Um, yeah, I've been watching that flat earth stuff that's been coming out. People I know for years in the dream world... There's definitely people I meet in the dream world that I like knew for eons in the dream world. But I wake up, I'm like, I don't know that guy. But in the dream world, I know that guy, I guess. It reminds me of the Japanese land of the rising sun symbol. You're right. It totally does, doesn't it? Wait, wasn't that um wasn't that symbol on the um wasn't that one of the Mandela symbol that one of the Mandela effects that the um that bandana changed it doesn't have that on there anymore it used to be that Sing more Jurassic Park Did I sing Jurassic Park? I don't think so. Japan keeps popping onto my radar. Well, they're just so loaded with Mandela. Uh, I just, um, it seems like, you know, uh, they've got the, they've got a lot of the imagination. They're driving a lot of the imaginary world right now with the manga and the Pokemon. Um, and the Pokemon have, sh like, pretty much shown up, a lot of them. Basically have been populating the earth with Pokemon. So, and then they are one of the first big fat um, geological shifts that we really noticed with them moving north like that. And then they're like, they're like propagating more islands and stuff. Um, so yeah, it just seems like they're kind of, um, they're kind of having a strong vote on where we're going, a strong influence. Okay, and the little one. All right, what, I don't know, what's, what's that creature in the thumbnail? I just noticed anteaters have changed even more lately. Uh, last time I checked, we didn't have this, this white-legged variety here. 
um, with these white legs like this. They were just, uh, um, they had grown the, the crazy side stripe here, but they didn't have the white legs. And the, the way the legs are, they almost look like they're, um, they're not, but they almost look like they're hooves. And look, they got this weird black spot on them. Also, their head is another animal where the head is like disappearing. I mean, they used to have a snout, a long snout, but they had a, a head. And now they're basically just a snout only. I mean, like the head is almost gone on these things. Uh, now they're just, they just look like a siphon. Um, believe it or not, when I first knew of anteaters, they were fairly normal looking other than they had a long snout and a long tongue. That was it. And then they started to kind of flatten and then they got this stripe and then the tail got more fuzzy. Um, and then they just, they keep going. Their head is going away. They're getting flatter and flatter. And lately now we've got these white, uh, legs. There's four kinds now, but this white leg kind was not here last time I looked. Uh, they look like two or three animals glued together now because of this, these legs. These, these front legs don't look like these back legs, and the head is all gone. The tail has gotten substantially even more fluffy and way longer uh, than I saw it like a month ago. So these guys have really kicked it up a notch. Uh, the tail was only like here before, now it's way out. Um, so they've grown another like 30% on their tail. These things are just getting crazy. See how they, I think they've, they've got their claws curled under now. I think they used to walk with the claws out, but now they're, they've got the claws under and they're walking on them like their hooves. Um, and that's why those feet look so funny now on the front because the, the claws are underneath now. It used to be more like these back legs here with like regular feet. And I mean, they had a long tongue, but it wasn't like that long because that tongue is like longer than the snout. I mean, it, it I don't know if it curls up in the back or it goes all into their back or what. I don't have to look that up actually because the tongue is like now ridiculous long. See, like that, that part doesn't look like it goes on that animal. They're almost walking like a horse. So I decided to have them on again just because this is another kind. Um, I don't think that one was there last time I looked. So yeah, there used to just be one like normal kind. For me now we've got all these weird I don't know very weird looking ones some of these anteaters don't even have much of a snout now oh this is the other thing I saw today um, a bunch of them walking like kind of upright there's a whole bunch of upright walking anteater photos now like this guy And, there, you know, I've talked before about how a lot of animals can walk way more upright now. I think it's that uh, different hip structure that we've changed to. It's just more flexible, um, allows for more options. Okay, I'm not seeing as many upright ones as I saw earlier today, but here's another one. This guy's obviously walking upright. And they were, you know, trotting a lot, not, not just rearing up, but they were walking pygmy anteaters. So anteaters now can look like anything, apparently. This thing, you're like hard pressed to even tell which is the head and which is the body on that one. Oh, uh, here's another one. Anyway, weird. All right. Let me make sure I haven't skipped anybody. No, 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 no. All right, this one is from Shari, Shari D. Um, do you guys remember the shoe banging incident? It's kind of a historical thing from Russia, the shoe banging incident. 
Uh, do you guys remember that event at all? I'm going to pull up something else while um, was there like a shoe banging incident for like famous Russian um, diplomacy issue this one also I just ran into I might have covered these like super tiny deer but I think they're looking a little different now they're like a large cat. They're a deer that's the size of a large cat. I noticed that some of them are getting these blue faces now. Um, look at those little things. So that's a deer. They have hooves and everything. These super tiny little... I swear these are like stuffed animal deer. Look at the size of that thing. That one's a baby, but they don't get much bigger than that. Um, but I see now that they're getting like these blue faces... Um, so it's getting more Pokemon-like. There was one here that was, um... I also do not remember the, the little antlers being on there last time. Um, now they do have it. These ones apparently are growing little tufted head things. Oh, here... See, like, they, some of them are having, like, a blue face, and then, um, I just don't remember that being the case for these bit, little tiny deer. But I think that's a new development in those things. idea is that if you are attracted to a certain culture or country, it tells you about yourself and your long soul life. Quite possibly. Who the heck knows? It sounds good, though. I remember the bush shoe and said, yeah, it's not the, th it's, this is an older one. Um, yeah, that still happened last I checked where, um, that, uh, Persian dude lobbed those shoes at, at baby bush and he dodged them. The one time when he was definitely not a goober is he just dodged those shoes. He dodged those shoes like a champ. And then he just kind of chuckled about it. I actually, I actually thought that was a goody good response. Like, yeah, whatever, dude. Shoes, no problemos. I guess if you grow up on the farm and you got to deal with horses, a couple old shoes are not a threat. Anteaters are the leftover animals of the ME put together. <laughs> they are now. I mean, they used to just look like a normal animal with a long snout. Now they're like, I don't know what the heck. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, this is kind of an older one, so it, you might have to be a little bit older, but um, it's the shoe banging incident. This one's got Mandela written all over it, though. So that's what this one is from, okay? So, um, it was, um, so this was, I kind of heard about this later, but it, the 1960 Cold War, there was a time when Nikita Khrushchev supposedly um, was supposed to be at an assembly, and other people were trying to talk, and he just was such a little jerk that he took off his shoe, and while the other person was trying to talk, he just banged it on the table, okay? And so it was kind of a famous incident. And so now they're saying that it never happened and that the image was just, like, Photoshopped, although there was no Photoshop back then, okay? So it's kind of ridiculous, and so it's, like, not the world's best Photoshop, but somehow they faked it by making this fake shoe. And so they're saying that the image of him banging his shoe and the whole incident never actually really happened, um, which I think just reeks of Mandela, really. Because way back then, they had there wasn't a lot of problems with fake photos way back then. Um, and it, I think word would get around pretty fast that it was like a fake photo if the event never happened. 
So somebody was in here, compl uh, somebody was complaining about um, civil rights and, you know, the Soviets not following them and the usual complaints against the Soviets and supposedly Khrushchev was like banging his shoe. Uh, but now they're saying, no, he really just pounded his fists on the desk and he did not... Taking off your shoe and pounding on the desk is like so ridiculous. I just can't imagine that somebody would mistake that for just an ordinary fist pounding. Um, but now that's what they're saying. That although people remember the shoe... Um, nobody, uh, there's no evidence of it and people who were there don't remember it and that the only photo of it is fake and there's no real evidence that that ever happened. Uh, it would be very unlikely that Nikita Khrushchev intentionally removed his shoe. There was little space under the desk and the Soviet leader, being somewhat overweight, could not reach his feet. Like he couldn't move his chair I mean, this is like, like you're incapable of, of accessing your foot because of the desk. You could just move your chair back a foot and you could get at your shoe. I'm sure that Nikita Khrushchev could get his shoe. But this is the argument that, oh, he wouldn't be able to reach his shoe. Um, to, uh, former UN staffer said Khrushchev could not have spontaneously removed his shoe at his desk but had pre previously lost it after a journalist stepped on it. Does that even make any sense? The UN staffer then retrieved the shoe, wrapped in a napkin, and passed it back to Khrushchev, who was unable to put it back on and had to leave it on the floor next to his desk. The same staffer also confirmed that she saw him later bang the shoe on the desk, thus functionally confirming the reports. But then you've got all these other people denying it, um, so it's just weird. It just got Mandela all over it. And the thing is, this photo is like a famous photo, and only now are they saying it's fake. When you look at it, it looks pretty darn fake now, too. So, I don't know. It's just weird. I wish George Bush would have gotten nailed with that guy's shoe at the press conference. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I disagreed with a lot of stuff that George Bush did, but um, I actually think he uh, comported himself well. He didn't have that guy, like, stomped on by s special security or anything. Um, this is the one time when I felt like he actually handled things in a mature fashion. And he was quick. They flew that shoe, and he's just like, choo, choo, choo. I wish he could handle everything else in such a mature and responsible fashion. Okay, this is another one. Okay, so shoe banging incident didn't happen. That was from Shari D. This one is from a, um, somebody I know online who we just chit chat in uh, private email a lot, and it's um, spotted cuss cuss. I don't think I've had cuss cuss on yet. It sounds like couscous, but it is not that. I might have to put animal in there, though. No, I got it. Um, so these little beasts that... Black-spotted cuscus. I guess they can't decide if they're going to be orange or black. They've got these white ones. Never seen these things before. Pretty, there's a pretty bizarre looking one. Look at these curly rat tails and stuff. So, new animal. Kind of cute, kind of ugly. Looks like there's a whole bunch of coloration variations on these things. So, yeah, new animal. This next one is from Mark Tyus. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard about the brain-eating amoeba. But apparently now there's like eight Texas cities that have brain-eating amoeba. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you really can't. Brain-eating amoeba. Omoeba. 
Wait, how do you spell that again? Amoeba. Eight Texas cities were alerted to brain eating amoeba. One of them declared a state of emergency. Have you guys ever heard of that before, like just recently? Brain eating amoebas in the water supply? Because I sure have it. Just like a few weeks ago. Um, so they're saying don't drink the water. The, the story is sort of strange. If you look up this these things, and so they're Nigleria fowleri. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. First, um, amoebic. Um, I don't remember it spelled like this. Um, a m e b i k. Amoebic. Uh, I remember it um, amoebic with an o still in there, but apparently now amoebic does not have an o. So um, they're basically saying that these are fairly common in uh, warm, fresh water, lakes, rivers, and hot springs, and soil. Um, infects people when contaminated water enters the body through the nose. So, like, if you go swimming in a lake, river, hot spring, or soil, uh, well, you don't, I guess you don't go swimming in the soil, but where it causes PAM, which is usually fatal, um, which is, PAM is primary amoebic Mengenocephalitis. Mengenocephalitis. Mengenocephalitis, yes. Uh, but I've not heard of this. Um, you know, as a person who goes swimming in rivers and lakes quite often, I do keep an eye on the stuff I could get. And um, this was never on the list. And apparently it's fairly common. Uh may in rare instances may also occur when contaminated water from other sources such as inadequately chlorinated swimming pool water or heated and contaminated tap water enters the nose um so are they saying then that um the tap water didn't get enough chlorine because other places were saying inadequately chlorinated tap water so is that what they're saying these eight texas cities don't have enough chlorine or, or how did it get contaminated then? Because they get the water, they're supposed to like filter it to make sure there's no gunk in it, and then they treat it with like chlorine and stuff. So what, eight cities don't have enough chlorine in them that they could have, uh, they could have brain-eating amoebas? Because the thing is, you know, like I have a friend that retired from working in um, water treatment, and that stuff is tested regularly i mean his job for years and years he had to take samples of water like daily and he had to test them for contaminant levels and chlorine levels and um all kinds of stuff like that like all the time so i don't see how they're going to be inadequately chlorinated you know for like eight whole cities worth of them i just i don't get it um and there's like no explanation for it so is this like a way to introduce these brain-eating amoebas by just getting them in the news or, or what? But it, the story is, is very strange. How did they get in there? You get the water, you treat it for the chlorine, you add all that, and then it goes out into the pipes. I don't, like, I just, I don't get it. It's checked so often. Somebody told me that they were writing literature and stuff they made up started happening like that movie Stranger Than Fiction. I don't, you know, I wonder if enough people believe stuff, is it make it true, at least for, for some people? Look up seals. 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 Mm. 
me those look not too different than I remember. There's a lot of coloration ones I see. These giant ones are super ugly, but they've been that way for some years. I think the snout has grown, but not recently. What the heck is this thing? Oh, he's sticking his face in the water. Okay. I've covered that one where they were putting the snakes in their nose or something. That was weird. Um, hmm. This mouth on this one looks weird. Leopard seals. Those are looking a little strange. The mouth, um, the mouth looks weird on that one. It's like too big for the head is what it is. They used to have like a big head and a small mouth. Now their mouth is like an alligator. Huh, that's interesting. You know, there's so many kinds, and then they've got the freshwater seals. And I've already said before that we didn't have the freshwater seals in my old timeline, but that's an older Mandela. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they do look a little weird, but um, especially just that one kind there. And the head on that one looks too small. I don't know what kind this is, but the head is like too dinky on these. This is another creature where the head is going away. Let's see, I'm gonna see which one that is. Spotted seals. Spotted seals got no more head. Let me see what that one with the big fat mouth was. I think the Mandela is, what the heck's on the side of his head? What's that thing? What is that thing? What, do they got ears now? Check that out, look. What is that? I think they get ears now. <laughs> That's not right. That is not right. <laughs> no way. Oh my God, it's got, it's got ears. I guess that's what that is, right? Look, 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 look. That is not right. It's not all of them, but whatever these things are. Fur seals do not have ears. Look at that. Oh, that looks ridiculous. I thought it had like a tumor or a parasite. <laughs> okay, well now... They don't all have it, but these guys, Cape Flattery fur seal. Is it just fur seals that have the ears? Australian fur seal. <laughs> oh, seals have boinky ears now. That's so wrong. Vanishing seals. North fur seal. It looks like it's the fur seals. <laughs> Is that what you were talking about? Because that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> it looks like a puppy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. It looks like a a horn, horny ears. <laughs> Is that what you were talking about when you said look at him? They can hold their breath for one hour now. That's pretty cool. Oh, can humans actually hold for an hour? I don't think we can do an hour. Last I checked, it was like 20-something minutes. How long can humans hold? I got to look at more seals with ears, though. But how long can humans hold breath? 30, wait, 
allows divers to hyperventilate for up to 30 minutes with pure oxygen before they submerge for their record attempt. 20, 22 minutes, 22 seconds. Okay, so it's still like, um, so it's about 24 minutes, looks like, still. 22 to 24 minutes. Okay, so that hasn't changed. We're not up to an hour yet. Nothing would totally shock me anymore, but 22 minutes is still ridiculous. Okay, so back to the seals with their ears. Is that what you were talking about when you were talking about their something about the seals? Okay, uh, that was a good find. Okay, I want to see what... Okay, so leopard seals are the ones with the big funny mouths. All right, let me just make sure those are eels. I mean, ears. Okay, the ear flaps seal it. Yeah, they didn't have sticky outy ear. Look at it, it looks like a puppy. All right, here we go. Sea lions have ears. Seals have ear holes. That's what I remember is only the ear holes. Um, but then they're saying fur seals have ears. So are fur seals actually seal, seal lions? All right, well, none of them had freaking ears before. Is that real? It's hard to tell. No, that's nine gag. I think that's fake. That one might be real. Oh, it's so wrong. It looks like it's fur seals, though. There's not a lot of photos with the ears yet. This one might be kind of fresh off the presses. Speaking of expressions that look very human, all of these are very much that. Okay, well, I'm going to put that one down. Fur seals have ears. Fine, very interesting. Cat eared seals. <laughs> they're like they're like horns too. Well, risk got bigger, more friendly looking. Yeah, I think last I checked they were very uh furry looking. They have this very furry face. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I oh, that the tusks have gotten so much longer on those. Where's that furry one? Yeah, see, like the furry snout thing that makes them look cuter. So cute. Look at that hump on the top of the head. That's weird looking. Those tusks are ridiculous, though. They just weren't anywhere. The tusks uh, in my old timeline were like that. There was none like, like this. That's insane. How could you even eat like that? Is that real? Elephant seal versus walrus. Which won this deadly struggle? Is that an elephant seal for reals? 
All right, now I got to type in elephant seal. Okay, those are the, oh, yeah. All right. Those snouts have definitely, a little moth in here, have definitely gotten uh, longer, but. Okay, so it must have been like a young one that they were looking at. That's, that's a pretty weird looking thing, though. See, the face has gotten all human looking. And there's, um, there's not like a real separate head anymore on a lot of animals. You see, like, the, the head and the body are, like, merging. Like, their neck is going away. And then, then, like, they just used to have more of a separate... It's not as prominent on these as some creatures, but... They're using... They're losing a concept of a separate head. It's like the head is merging into the body. So, so yeah, elephant seals, um, the snout has gotten a lot longer for me, but I actually had that one on quite some years ago, so it's kind of an older Mandela for me. Okay, uh, Ramses the second from Egypt. How do you spell Ramses? This one is from John Austin. Oh, and the brain-eating amoeba was from Mark Tyus. So good find, Mark Tyus. Ramses. Now, for me, there was only one spelling, uh, but now there's two, and this other one is preferred, and it's not the one I remember that I've ever heard of. So, well, and you know, the other thing that happened today was I've, finally finished my taxes because I got an extension last cut like three months ago I got an extension and I paid estimated and then I did all my taxes and I looks like I paid really close so I'll get a couple dollars back off my estimated and um, there's a lot of new tax rules that aren't new they're supposed to be really old but I have not heard of them in 15 years of doing taxes and neither has my friend and she's been doing taxes for like 40 years and we've all had different tax people over the years and all of our tax people told us the exact same thing and now we're told this new thing and everybody I t consulted with said yes it's always been that way and um, it has to do with um, write-offs in the house like if um, now, my old timeline, if you had a home office or some kind of home usage dedicated area of your house, you could only write it off if you paid rent or mortgage. If you didn't have rent or mortgage, then there was nothing to write off. Uh, but now, and has been for quite some time, like forever, according to everybody, um, you can also just write off by the square foot. It's like $5 a square foot uh, per year. Or you can write off as a percent of uh, your house that is used for business. That same percent of your house that's used for business, you can take that percent and write off that percent of your utilities, including property tax for the whole year. So I could add up all my utilities and pro say 10% of my house was used for business. I could um, I could collect all of my sales tax or all of my property tax and all of my utilities, phone. Um, any of that stuff and mortgage and rent if I paid all that um, or one or the other um, and then take that percentage and then write that all off for that year and that was never the case before and so I was telling my friend I'm like oh my god she said I could do blah 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 and she's like I never heard of that either but then I talked to all these other people and like oh yeah you could do that oh sure, oh, sure. you know I mean like I had every tax person tell me for 15 years the same thing and now all of a sudden everybody except for my friend is telling me the uh, total different and oh yeah sure I don't know it's just rules keep changing and it's just like in this case it it didn't really hurt me it's good but I don't know I guess I shouldn't complain about more write-offs but there's been a few that kind of bit me in the butt, too. So this one's kind of one that's good, but there's been a few where, like, I never had to do that before. Now I got to do that. Okay. 
anyway, so yeah, Mandela laws are really kind of a pitta, let's just say. In this case, they're not, but I'm really, really suspicious that I just didn't happen to know that rule for all those times. Um, because before it was always like, oh, yeah, no, you can't write that off. Now it's like, duh, what an idiot. Of course you could write that off. All right, let me see what you guys think about Ramses. Ramses. <laughs> Satan's storm in 1960. No, I don't think I've covered that. Satan's storm. Later after midnight, a heat burst struck the community of Koperl when a dying thunderstorm collapsed over the town. Superheated air descended in the community. Oh, I think I might have covered it, but it seems like it's a little extreme now. I've never heard of it as Satan's storm, though. It's kind of weird. Satan's storm. The whole terminology is weird. The thunderstorm collapsed over the town. Why would a thunderstorm cause superheated air? Hot wind gusts up to 75 mile per hour. Now it's a weather phenomena. Okay. It's a weather phenomena known as Satan's storm. Now I've covered the downdrafts, so this might, it sounds like it might be a, like a version of that. Oh, funny, because the word of the day was proboscis, long snout or trunk. No, we were just looking at those. Uh, blah, blah. Where's the Satan storm business here, guys? I seem to be missing the part that has to do with what I clicked on. Wait, here we go. Heat bursts are rare atmospheric events. Characterized by gusty winds, a sudden increase in temperature, and a rapid decrease in moisture. They usually occur at night and are associated with decaying thunderstorms. A literal after midnight, blah, blah, blah. The whole terminology is just alien. Superheated air descended. The temperatures peaking around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, I remember talking a little bit about something like this, but it wasn't Satan's storm, and it wasn't 140 degrees. 20 degrees above the official all-time high for the state of Texas and exceeding the highest official temperature recorded on Earth at the time. People thought the world was ending. The power went out and air conditioners failed. Home became sweltering. People fled their homes, believing them to be on fire. Parents wrapped their terrified children in wet sheets. The next morning, farmers found their corn had been cooked on the stalk. Cotton fields were burned to a crisp. Leaves on plants looked as if they'd been killed in a snap freeze. As rare as heat bursts are, the co-pearl heat burst remains one of the worst on record. Holy hand grenades, Batman. I mean, that would scare me. <laughs> you better hope you have a swimming pool or something. I don't know what I would do. Just fill up a tub with water and, like, get in it. The corns were cooked on the stalk. Oh. Well, you just go out and eat the pre-cooked corns in the morning? Oh, my goodness. That would freak me out. Yeah, no. Um, I do remember something like this, covering something like this, but it wasn't nearly this extreme. I wonder if it was the early version of this before it had gotten this ridiculous. So now it's called a, it's a weather phenomenon too. So now that it's a weather phenomenon, I think we're going to hear more about that. 
That's that's a good find. Yeah, no, I hadn't heard of Satan Storm. 140 degrees. That's insanity. Could you imagine that in the middle of the night? Yeah, I would run out of the house too if it was suddenly 140 degrees in the house. Explain how it got so hot. I know, they're saying it's decaying. Yeah. All right, I'll check it. I'll check it and see if there's like a wiki or something. Satan Storm wiki. Because wiki pretty much describes the current belief system of the earth. So, um, Damon Hellstrom, also known as Son of Satan and Hellstrom. Oh, nope, that's a different thing. Five of the weirdest weather events in the South. All right, let's go to the wiki. Quit wasting time. Dying thunderstorm collapsed. The storm had rained itself out and with little to no precipitation to cool the resulting downdrafts. I don't get it. If the storm rained itself out, then there's really not a storm left hardly, right? Um, nothing to cool the resulting downdrafts. Superheated air descended upon the community in the form of hot winds. Nope, there, it's verifying uh, that other yammer. Huh. It's not a very large wiki, considering Co-Pearl, Texas. Well, I hope it stays in Texas. I hope, for, I hope what happens in Texas stays in Texas. Um, yep, nope. Looks like it's legit, according to official reality, anyways. The heat, now, they're saying without water to cool the downdrafts. I mean, does air have to have water to stay cool, though? I don't... I think temperature does not require water, right? I mean, that's why the storyline's a little, I don't know, strange. They're not saying it's radiant heat, though. They're saying it's from the air. And it's nighttime, so it's not the sun. Can you freaking imagine? Um, can you imagine you're sleeping and your house becomes a hundred, and like insane winds, and your house becomes a hundred and forty degrees Fahrenheit, which is, I guess, sixty C is what Voidscape is saying. Eric, yeah, I kind of covered that one on the floor. I'm not going to cover that one again. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it, I, a lot of stuff that I read now in current reality sounds ridiculous. I mean, I just, every day I'm like, that just sounds stupid. And uh, this is another one. So I, I don't know what to tell you. It doesn't make sense to me either. Um, there's a lot of stuff that 10 years ago, I'd be like, that's stupid. I'm never believing that. But everything is stupid here. Well, like a lot of stuff is stupid here. Do, 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 do. All right. Turn it upside down and get the proper side. Do, do. Got you. Oh, Ramses. So I remember Ramses is R-A-M-S-E-S. -S. Ramses the second. Do, do, do. But now most places are saying it should be this, Ramesses, R-A-M-E-S-S-E-S, -S -S, the second, Ramesses, Ramesses, not Ramses, but Ramesses. Um, so here they'll, they use the old spelling, but then it says also spelled this other way. So it looks like these Ramesses too is kind of taking over though. Because most of the main um, official sites all are calling it Ramesses. I actually saw this a while ago, but I thought it was some like other dude. I, I didn't realize it was Ramses, because I had not seen this uh, previously. I thought it was like some relative or something. 
I didn't re realize that they were talking about the same dude. So that's a spelling Emmy change for me. And also for John Austin, who discovered it. And, um, all right. Possession. How do you spell possession? Like, um, I am in possession of a piece of paper. How do you spell possession? This one also changed for me. And then there's one other that I'll cover. Do, 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 do. This one's rather amusing considering the, the times that we are in. Uh, so this person, uh, Divided We Fall, found this one. Uh, the elephant logo in the Republican official elephant logo in most cases now has upside down stars. I don't remember it like that. And if you look at the, um, the Democrat logo, they're all right side up. So if I go on to images, like two out of three of them have upside down stars. But if you actually go to the Republican, like national committee and the official Republican sites, they all have the upside down stars, just like this one. Now this one is how I remember it, where they both have the right side up stars, which makes more sense to me. This is CNN.com. But the actual Republican official sites are using the upside down stars. Now, I'd say maybe somebody just goofed up or something, but like two out of three of them all have that now. So it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's, it's interesting when you get them next to each other, then they both become right side up. But, um, when the Republican ones are on their own, upside down, upside down. Here's one where right side up for the Dems, upside down for the Republicans. So I'm not really totally up on the current timeline symbology, but I know that in recent weeks I've been hearing stuff about these upside down stars meaning some kind of bad thing or another, and I don't know. Uh, it, like, I'm not Republican nor Democrat because I don't trust any of them, but um, I do think that that's a, maybe a little bit suspicious that that suddenly upside down stars like that. Uh, why would you do that? And even if one person did it, there shouldn't be so many of them. Okay, so spelling of possession. For me, possession was P-O-S-E-S-S-I-O-N, -S -S possession. I'm in possession of the stuff. Uh, but there's two S's and an E and two S's again in the current timeline. That looks like really crazy to me. So it's P-O-S-S-E-S-S-I-O-N, lots of S's. So I would say that that's a Mandela for Eva. And um, John Austin also remembers just the one S. Too bad I should switch my, I should switch the, um, I'm thinking about switching the thumbnail to those seals because that's like so crazy. Those little baby fur seals with ears. I, so if you see the thumbnail change, I did it because I'm, I'm probably going to right now change it after I get off because I'm pretty much done now. I'm going to see what you guys are up to, but upside down pentagram with devil symbols. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Republicans of all people, if there's any kind of conspiracy central, it's the Republican lands. I just can't see how somebody didn't go, hey, dumb, dumb, why don't you fix those stars? Ugh, get me some water, I'm thirsty. Yeah, okay. So devil symbol, yeah, it was something like that. Um, I wasn't sure if there was anything special to it, but I remember watching videos about the upside down stars as in it was a deliberate change a few years ago. Okay, let me just dig that out then. Repub why would they deliberately do that? Republican elephant 
upside down stars. Let's see if there's a... Hmm. Well, other people are looking at the satanic symbol. Here is the current logo. It shows the upside down stars. The stars used to be point upwards like this. This may seem like an insignificant thing, and I suppose it might be, but why would they change it? This seems to be strange for a party that has so many religious members and voters, including Christian fundamentalists and evangelicals and blah, 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 blah. Okay. The shape of a pentagram pointing down is commonly used as a symbol of Satanism. Why did this change happen? The Democrat Party also features stars, but they're still pointing upwards. The website you linked claimed that the logo was changed in 2000. However, a 2004 GOP conference shows the stars pointing upwards, and a 1984 pin shows the stars pointing downwards, so I'm not sure if your claim is true. I haven't been able to find other relevant images so far, but I think that the claim that George W. Bush turned the stars upside down can be safely rejected. All right, so that person got no answer. When the stars in the logo were turned upside down around 2000, okay, so now they're claiming it was turned around in 2000. Not long before the first year of George W. Bush administration, all the stars in the logo were turned upside down so that the points were down. In addition to this, there was a shift in the color scheme. Darker shades of red and blue were chosen. GOP representatives have not given any explanations for the satanic symbolism, leaving a lot of room for accusations. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so we got no answer. I do think it's weird, and I don't know why they wouldn't just flip them back um, quietly, just flip them back. I certainly, if I was a party full of religious fundamentalists and those types of people would not have upside down pentagrams. It just looks bad. Huh. Interesting. I don't know. Can't tell you. Nothing in this timeline is smart or makes any sense. All symbols today, especially in politics, have esoteric occult symbolism. Honestly, I'm surprised they weren't upside down to begin with. Um, I think it's something to watch out for currently, and it may flip again. I'm kind of seeing, you know, um, the two sides take turns being right. And um, I think what we might be seeing is um, who we got to be more... Just keep an eye on the Republican side is all I'm saying. And I, I don't trust either side, so I don't have a pony in this race. But um, 
and it may flip back and you know tomorrow it might be like oh what are you talking about it was never upside down but The lantern thing in the Baphomet head. You know, if you look at that Baphomet head thing, I swear the lantern thing got bigger. I was just looking at it again, and I, I think it's grown a bit. I think it's like 20% bigger than it was before. And I didn't see so many with, like, the fire on the head as last time. I it just, it seems like it's gotten just a little more since that time I saw it. Oh, interesting, now I'm not seeing uh, as many with the centerpieces. But um, it's, um, uh, there's a lot of them with the fire now. It seems like that's kind of the latest little spin. So there, I do the whole Baphomet instead of just the head. So some of them have um, this spiky thing, but some now have like this fiery flame thing sticking out. See, I'm seeing more like this. That one's got a double one. So the center doodah is getting bigger than the horns now. So many with the fire. See, it's getting kind of ridiculous looking. See, check it out. Crazy. All right, anyways, uh, I think we're heading down the home stretch here. Making you thirsty, huh? I'm making me thirsty. You know, I don't know, this symbolism seems to be really a big deal in all the timelines, but even more here. And so I probably would have, 10 years ago, I would have written that off as just somebody was lazy uh, copying over the stars. But um, it just seems like symbolism is, I, I'm more and more paying attention to the symbolism as it shifts between the timelines. So, And it, it may not mean anything, but I think everything means something now. Have you taken steps regarding the sovereign citizen route? Do you give that any credibility? Um, I, I really don't know on that one. I do think that um, this is my feeling. I do think that we need to pay some taxes to support our environment. I think that's fair. So like, um, you know, a certain percentage to pay for the roads and blah, blah, blah. But that money should go to the roads and, and reasonable price so I don't think you know a lot of the sovereign citizen people are like I don't have to pay taxes and stuff I, I wouldn't go that route because I feel that that's wrong and um so I can't advocate that it doesn't feel right to me as far as having an alienable rights that we should have as far as basic freedoms and, and safeties and things um those I can agree with um legally there's not going to be I don't think there'll be much ground to walk on because they're not even following the laws that are on the books now. They're not like in the United States, they're not following the Constitution. The Constitution is trash um, anymore. So whether we have that right or not, I, it's, it's irrelevant. On the flip side, I do think that uh, we make our own reality. Um, but Look at how the Mandela does things, okay? They're, it's not in your face. It's sneaky. It just goes about its business. Things change gradually. They slip under the radar. And I think that's our best also. Um, when you make a big stink and get in everybody's face, then it's no longer just your reality. You're now, like, forcing your reality on everybody else too. 
And I think that you're going to have a lot tougher going in your route if you do that. If you make a big um, show of everything, you're going to have to fight a lot more. Um, if you want to stay out of trouble but still get your way, I think the easiest way is more like kind of how um, Obi-Wan Kenobi did it. You know, he didn't go, I have a right to uh, take my droids wherever I want. He just quietly went, oh, nothing to see here, folks, you know, and just slipped under the radar. And I think that that is the route for me. Uh, people who like to fight, okay, fight. You know, I mean, we probably have different kinds of people on this earth for different reasons. So if you're like Brian Stavely and you feel that you have to fight, then fight. But you're going to have a lot more... Um, backlash that you'll have to deal with you're going to have people fight back when you fight you're going to have a fight back and um so you got to make that choice and that's a choice for everybody um sometimes i decide to fight and sometimes i don't decide to fight but that's a route you're going to have to take and i hope that kind of answers the question i think it depends on you so sovereign citizenship if you're going to stomp around and go i'm a sovereign i'm a sovereign citizen and i can do what i want you can't tell me what to do and you wave it in everybody's face then you're probably going to get blowback and it's going to come back and they're going to be like no -uh, and they're going to fight you um, but if you just decide what you want which is maybe not to be bothered and um, not to have to do certain things uh, and you try to find routes to find that without making a big stink I think you'll find that it's an easier route is all I think you can get your way without um, making it like in your face thing. So, so you decide. Um, I don't know. I, I go back and forth. Sometimes I feel like it's time to fight. And sometimes I feel like, um, people have already made up their mind and it's a waste of time. So pick your battles. That's all I could say. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to be able to Here's the thing with the courts. I mean, you're going to have to do a lot of hassle and are you going to have to get a lawyer and who knows when the courts will even be open and it could just drag on for years. And if you want to do that, then do it, you know, but um, I have a feeling by the time it even went to court, this thing will all be over anyways. So, but, you know, lead by example. Um, you don't have to always be fighting to lead by example. Um, like today, you know, I just talk with people and I just go, hey, look, you know, the CDC says the death rate is only 99, uh, the, the death rate is less than 99 something percent. And um, I just don't think that it's really worth worrying about when, you know, so many other things kill so many more people. And you don't, you know, you don't have to fight them. Just go, oh, this is just what I think. And, and if they disagree with you, fine, you know. You don't have to go and lock horns with everybody to make an impression. And sometimes when you lock horns, it just gives them more weapon against you and makes them want to fight you more. So sometimes if you can just, you know, put that, just that little seed of thought in their, in their mind and just water it gently, uh, you can get your way that way. Other times it is time to fight. Um, so, you know, what do what you feel is right deep inside you know what is the route that you really feel called on and sometimes it's just going to be talking with people in a really nice way in a real gentle way um so you guys decide in the end it's we're gonna need different kinds of people to get this done so i think your essential nature like what is down inside you is going to be um part of what you have to ask and I don't think there's going to be just one single route for every um, person and, and each situation is going to be a little bit different like if you work for the medical industry should you put your foot down and then get fired or should you stay in there and talk and with people and make a difference from the inside uh, I don't have the answer and there may not just be one you know it really may depend on you, but you can make a difference either way and you can help one way over here and one way over there. So maybe there isn't, you know, just the one answer. Yeah, authenticity. You know, you got to look at what's right for you as well. 
Um, and, and don't look to other people always to tell you the answer. You always have the answer inside of you um, if you clear your mind enough of insecurities and what other people told you and those things and just look in there with a really clear mind. You could always find the answer there. And there's more answers and more answers and more solutions that you you wouldn't have even thought of. So they're all in there. I don't feel at home in this world or other earth before the quantum change. I don't like the aging bodies and anything. Yeah, you know, I never really felt totally at home before, but now I feel even less at home. But I think part of it is the way I look at it because there's two ways to look at it. You can really look at um, the fact that, you know, things I'm familiar with were gone and this is not my world. Or I could really look at uh, the opportunity of having a new, better world that I can find through the end of this. And so you, I kind of sway back and forth about how I concentrate on it. I mean, change is always going to mean loss. Um, so if you want to stay change, if you want to stay the same, then you're not going to be able to improve. So you can't really have one or the other. And when I'm feeling all depressed and sad, I definitely think about, oh, I'm never going to, those people are gone and everything is weird and the, 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 and then other times when I'm feeling happy, I really think about, you know, this is amazing and look at all these cool things and who would have ever imagined and think of the opportunity and, you know, uh, maybe we'll get free energy and all this stuff. So, you know, the same thing can be a wonderful or horrible thing depending on how you look at it. So there's that too. All right, anyways, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, so I think it's time for me to head out. So with all that, um, think good thoughts, everybody. Thank you so much for all of your help and ideas. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline. <laughs>